Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and we're back for another installment of Eureka Math. Now, for today's lesson, we're going to get into Grade 3, Module 5, Lesson 17. Grade 3, Module 5, Lesson 17. And what Lesson 17 gets into is having us identify or, or locate and label fractions on a number line, right? Different fractions. Um, some of them are proper fractions, some of them are improper fractions. And we're gonna talk about how to do that, okay? So you can work with your student on like how to, how to label, how to locate and label fractions on a number line. So I got two examples behind me. I got one example over here, and I got another example over here, all right? And this is gonna, this might look confusing when you first look at it, but I'm gonna make it make sense. All right, so again, the instructions. To locate and label the following fractions on the number line. So with number one, right, we got a list of fractions. I got zero sixths, six sixths, 12 sixths, three sixths, nine sixths. It's always difficult for me to make that TH sound. You might've noticed that. Um, that's a diagram, right, by the way. When you take two letters, a TH sound, when you take two letters that make one sound, it's called a diagram. Your, your children might learn about that in a reading class, right? But yet we're using that in math, it applies to math. So I wanna bring that up because a lot of people are kind of under this false notion that there's this deep separation between math and reading, and there really isn't. So a lot of my work goes toward trying to break that, that kind of myth or dispel that myth that math don't got nothing to do with reading and that reading don't got nothing to do with math. They both got a whole lot to do with each other. A lot of our students have challenges with math, not really because of the math concepts, but because of reading issues. So I just wanted to put that out there because that's a diagram is something that you'll learn about in reading or in a reading class. But yet diagrams present themselves in math problems, right? Because the TH sound you need, that's important. The TH sound at the end of the number six, it creates a, separate, a difference. It lets you know there's a difference between the number six and what a sixth is. Those are two different things, right? So if your children don't understand what a diagraph is, and that TH sound and how that changes what the number is, a lot of mistakes will happen. So keep that in mind too. Anyway, moving right along. We got one, two, three, four, five. We got these five fractions, right? We wanna locate and label them on the number line. First, what I wanna do is, based on the denominator, I wanna label hash marks on this number line first. And because my denominator is a six in all of these fractions, that means I'm gonna create six spaces between each whole number, each pair of whole numbers. Six spaces here, six spaces here, and six spaces here. Again, why am I doing that? Because my denominator is a six. My denominator is a six. So I'm gonna break this up, I'm gonna break each of these up into six equal spaces. Now the way I'm gonna do that is, like in between zero and one, I'm gonna find what I think is the halfway mark. And I'm gonna draw a hash mark there, right? And then on the left side, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna create three spaces. And on the right side, I'm gonna create three spaces. So I have a total of six spaces. So watch this. Halfway, see that? That's my halfway mark, right? And then I'm gonna cut the half up into thirds. And then that's gonna create sixths all the way across. So I do this, I do like one, two, one, two. Now I got six spaces. That's how you create six spaces. So if you ever wanna create a fraction bar that has six spaces or you wanna draw sixths on a number line, all you gotta do, find the halfway mark and then do three spaces to the left, three spaces to the right. That's it. Same thing between one and two. Halfway mark, two, two lines to make three spaces. Then two lines to make three spaces on this side. I got six more spaces. Between two and three, halfway mark, and then two lines to make three spaces, Two lines to make three more spaces. All right, so now I got all my spaces, I got all my sixths. Now what I wanna do is, I wanna draw boxes around the whole numbers. Cause the whole numbers are like, they're like reference points. So I'm gonna draw boxes around the whole numbers. So my whole numbers. Another whole number. Another whole number. Another whole number. So I got zero, one, two, and three, those are whole numbers, right? Now, the way I figure out what the fractions are 
that correspond to the whole numbers is, I take the whole number and I multiply it by the denominator. So this whole number is zero. I already know all my denominators are six because I got, and I got six spaces in between each pair of whole numbers. So what's zero times six? Zero. Any number times zero is zero, right? So that's gonna be zero six. Same thing with one. I take one, I multiply that by my denominator. My denominator is six. One times six is six. So I got six sixths. Now also something to remember too, whenever your numerator and your denominator are the same exact number, then that fraction will always be equal to one. Again, this is something to memorize. Whenever your numerator and denominator are the same exact number, that fraction will always be equal to one. Then with the two, I do two times six. Six is still my denominator. Two times six is 12. If we skip count by twos, if we do six twos, we'll stop at 12. Or if we flip it around and did six times two, instead of two times six, we skip count by sixes, we do six twice, we'll end up at 12 also. Or we can just memorize our multiplication facts and then we know that two times six is 12 or six times two is 12. So this is the same thing as 12 sixths. Then we get to the three, we multiply three by six. Three by six is 18. So we got 18 sixths. All right. Now it's time to label, locate and label the following fraction. So zero sixths, where's that at? That's right here. We already got that. So we cross that off because zero sixths is right there. All right. Six sixths, where's that at? Right here. Cross that off. 12 sixths, where's that at? At the two. They are the same thing. Cross that off. Three sixths. Now, where's that? That's not already labeled, but we can find it by counting. Because if I know, hmm, I know this is zero sixths and this is six sixths, I know that three of them is going to be in between zero and six. So I just count. I basically start from zero. Zero sixths. One sixth, two sixths, three sixths. That's it right there. I just located. I located where three sixths is going to be at. And I'm going to write the fraction right there. That's where three sixths is at. See, that's all you got to do. And then we cross it off. Now, the same thing with nine sixths, because nine sixths is not already labeled. So I got to count. So if I went from, if I got six sixths right here and I got 12 sixths right here, I gotta know that nine sixths must be between six sixths and 12 sixths. It must be. So I got, I'm gonna go from six sixths to seven sixths to eight sixths to nine sixths. Right there. Right there. That's where it's at. That's where the nine sixths is. So now I got nine sixths right there. And now we've located and labeled all the fractions in number one. And that's how you do it. And we're gonna do the same thing. We slide over to number two. Slide over to number two, we're gonna do the same thing. All right? Now, looking at number two, we got, now we're dealing with thirds. We're dealing with thirds now. And I'm glad, because that frag, that denominator is a little easier for me to say. We're dealing with thirds now. I got 18 thirds, 14 thirds, nine thirds, 11 thirds, six thirds, all right? So that means each space in between two whole numbers is gonna be broken up into thirds. So the way I break a whole number up into thirds is I write two lines or two hash marks. So between two and three, one, two. Between three and four, one, two. Now remember, two lines makes three spaces. Two lines makes three spaces. So don't let that confuse you. Don't think to yourself, well, oh, I thought we were making three spaces. We are. Two lines makes three spaces. See, now we got one, two, three. And we got one, two, three. And in between four and five, we do the same thing. One, two, three. Then between five and six, we do the same thing. One, two, right? And we can stop there. So now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna first identify the fractions that correspond with the whole numbers that we give it. So I got a two, right? And like I told you before, what you do is 
you take the whole number and multiply by the denominator. That's how you get your numerator. The whole number multiplied by the denominator. That's how you get your numerator. And what you could do if you wanted to, is you could just set it up with your denominators already, because we know our denominators are threes, right? So then under this, three. And under this, three. And under five, three. And under six, three, right? So if I do two times three, that gives me six, right? Multiplication facts. So six is gonna be my numerator. So two is equivalent to six thirds. Then I do three times three, multiplication facts. That gives me nine. So nine thirds is equivalent to three. Then four times three, multiplication facts, 12. So 12 thirds is equivalent to four. Then five times three, 15. I can write 15 thirds. That's equivalent to five. Then six times three, last but not least, that's 18. So six is equivalent to 18 thirds, all right? So now, what I've done is, I've identified the fractions that correspond to all of my whole numbers. All of my whole numbers. Two, three, four, five, and six. Now, I wanna look at the fractions I was given, and I wanna see where they fall on the number line. So I look for 18 thirds. Oh, 18 thirds is right there. So that's done. 14 thirds. I don't see 14 thirds already written, but check this out though. I see 15 thirds right here, and I know that 14 thirds is just one less than 15 thirds. So 14 thirds is gonna be right here. That's where that is. Because remember, we're counting by thirds. We're counting by thirds. So if I was at 12 thirds, then I go 13 thirds, and then I go 14 thirds. Or if I was counting backwards, from 15 thirds, I go backwards one third, and that puts me at 14 thirds also. See? And then, let's see where nine thirds is. Do I see it up here? Yup. I see nine thirds right there. That's already located and later. Where's 11 thirds at? I don't see 11 thirds already written, but I see a 12 thirds, and I see a similar situation to what happened when I had to label 14 thirds. I know that 11 thirds, is just one less than 12 thirds. So I find 12 thirds, which is right here, because 12 thirds and four are the same thing. 12 thirds and four are the same thing. So basically, since 12 thirds and four are the same thing, that means that 12 thirds is right here. 11 thirds is just one third less than 12 thirds. So I could just label the 11 thirds right there. Now, last, lastly, six thirds. Do I see six thirds up here? I do. Six thirds is right here. Six thirds is right here. And it corresponds to positive two. So we have just located and labeled the following fractions in two examples. And I hope that was helpful. Now, there's some more examples in the Eureka workbook that you can, where you can like practice these skills, right? Because that's important. It's all about practicing. With these videos, I can show you how to do it, but you really are gonna learn it, and it's really gonna, you're gonna develop a mathematical muscle memory by really practicing and doing more and more examples on your own. You know what I mean? So again, hope that was helpful, and until the next video, be well, have a good day, peace.